Hello everyone, and welcome to this lesson on open channel hydraulics associated with steps and sills. The learning objectives for this lesson is that students will be able to apply the specific energy equation to define a step and sill for open channel flow, determine flow depths upstream and downstreams of a step or sill, define maximum step heights, and evaluate conditions of choked flow. Prior to getting into the analysis of steps and sills, let's go over a few facts. First, a step or a sill is a small obstruction within a channel. Flow rates through the obstruction are constant. The unit discharge, which is the, defined as the flow rate divided by the base width, is constant, which means the base width through the, contraction, through the obstruction is constant. The specific energy is used to determine the height of the step and the flow depths. And also the specific energy is used to determine the depth of the depression of the sill and the flow depth over the sill. So let's first analyze steps and humps. This first example shows you a subcritical flow condition where the water surface is out of phase. As the flow moves from point one to point two, you will see a dip in the flow as it goes over the step. This can be illustrated by the specific energy diagram with the depth on the y-axis and energy on your x-axis. The flow depth will be higher at point one than at point two, as illustrated in the diagram. As the water goes over the step, the depth will decrease the difference between the energy at point one and point two is the step height, and therefore the energy at point one is equal to the energy at point two plus delta Z. Now, the minimum energy will occur when you are at D critical. This is very important. Energy at point two can never be less than the minimum energy. So facts. The depth at point one under subcritical flow is always greater than the depth at point two. The depth in point two must be greater than or equal to DC. If the depth at point two ends up being less than DC, this problem is not going to work. The velocity at point one is actually less than the velocity at point two. And as you go through the step, what you'll notice is the water will speed up. That's really what causes that drop in elevation of the water surface. The energy of point one has to be greater than the energy of point two, and the energy of the point two must be greater than or equal to the minimum energy. Note, if the energy of point two is less than the minimum energy, E min, the flow depth upstream of the step will increase until the depth of the step is equal to the critical depth. So what you're seeing is me showing you a calculation where in green, the elevation at the step falls to critical, causing the elevation and the, causing the specific energy and the depth of point one to increase to the new point. This term is called backwater. In a supercritical channel, the water surface is in phase. As the water goes over the step, it will follow the same shape as the step itself. In this case, the depth of point one is actually less than the depth of point two. The depth of point one results also in a much higher velocity than the depth of point two. The difference in the energy from point one to point two will give you the step height. The highest the depth of point two can reach is critical depth. If the energy was great, more less than critical energy, this problem could not be solved. Remember, in supercritical channels, D1 is always less than D2, and D2 must be less than or equal to DC. You cannot move from sub to supercritical flow or from supercritical flow to subcritical flow. V1 
is much larger than V2, and V2 must be greater than or equal to the critical velocity. And the energy at point one is greater than the energy at point two, which is equal to or greater than the critical energy. Note, if the energy at point two is less than the minimum energy, this suggests there's not enough energy to go over the step. As a result, either the depth upstream needs to be reduced or this channel will switch to subcritical flow, causing the depth of the step to go critical and for you to recalculate the upstream depth, making this a subcritical channel. Most likely, the second scenario will occur because there is no way to physically reduce this depth upstream unless you can control it somehow on the upstream side. Depressions and sills are different. Depressions and sills have a depression in the channel. In this case, the energy at point one is equal to the energy at point two minus delta Z. When you go from point one to point two in a subcritical channel, you will actually increase the depth. The depth at point two will be greater than point one which has to be less, greater than or equal to the critical depth. The velocity of point two is actually less than the velocity of point one, which is what we want in a sediment sill because the sediment will start settling. And the energy of point two is greater than the energy at point one. And remember, the energy of point one has to be greater than or equal to the minimum energy. If D2 is greater than the banks of the channel, flooding can occur. So we need to be very mindful of what that is. A sail that experiences supercritical flow follows the same equation where E1 is equal to E2 plus delta Z. Realize that D2 must be less than D1, which is less than or equal to DC, and that the energy at point two is much greater than the energy at point one, which is greater than or equal to the minimum energy. Now the velocity of point two is greater than the velocity of point one. It would pick up sediment from the sill. That's what this means. There's really no reason to install a sill in a supercritical channel. Also, please note that delta Z for a sill can be as large as you want. But remember to use your engineering judgment when you design a sediment sill. 